to another review from the road. Uh, this time, I, when I jumped on the plane, I threw a set of watch in my backpack and decided to bring it with me. Now, I recently did a review of Unbroken, and someone had asked, well, what, you know, what was my opinion on set of watch, since they at least look like they're similar games, uh, and they have a somewhat similar theme. Uh, so, that's what I'm going to do. Now, I did do an unboxing of this not too long ago, and I have the Deluxe Edition from the Kickstarter that I picked up for about $29. Um, now, the game itself is a co-op game for one to four players, uh, and to me it is one of those combinations of puzzle, uh, tower defense, strategy, resource management games. Uh, and in this case, you play four heroes. How many heroes you play depends on how many people are playing. So in a solo game, you play all four heroes, and you're basically defending your world from an onslaught from the unhallowed, and you have to go to nine different places and defend yourself so the unhallowed can't rise. Um, but basically you could make up any kind of background story you wanted that has a nice medieval theme. Uh, you know, you could be on a quest to save a princess and you've got to go to nine different locations to find her, whatever. Um, but the theme is basically nine locations and you've got to defend against the monsters and then the sort of monster overlords. Uh, and if you can defeat all of them, at the end, you win the game. Uh, if you can't defeat them or you run out of your resources, then you lose the game. So, let's get to it. Alright, so let's go over the contents of the box uh, and the parts. Uh, so the Deluxe came with this slip cover, which is nice, but not really necessary. Uh, the box itself uh, has one of the magnetic lid types and you open up and it actually has the game board as part of the lid and that has good and bad uh, with it. Uh, good being you never lose the board, it doesn't take up a lot of space in the box. The bad is it's always going to be this big uh, and there's no way to really alter that. Uh, it comes with a rule book. It's not very long. I uh, forget maybe 20 pages. Uh, that includes uh, the glossary in the back. It's brief, uh, large print, good pictures, uh, and it walks you right through how to play the game. So it's actually a pretty good rule book. Uh, I was pretty happy with that. Uh, then you have uh, two kinds of dice, eight-sided dice and six-sided dice. Each character uh, rolls one or the other uh, dice to create their number of uh, combat points that they get. Uh, you have these out of the way. Uh, the monster cards. You have uh, two kinds of monsters. You have the regular monsters and then you have uh, the unhallowed which are the sort of the big bad monsters uh, that are uh, the harder to fight monsters. Uh, as far as the cards go, I went ahead and sleeved them. Uh, the artwork is a, a nice uh, balance between uh, I wouldn't say cartoony at all, but uh, nice illustrations. Scary, but not super scary. Not so much that you couldn't let your kids play with it uh, as well. Um, so you have your unhallowed here. Your next round of uh, monsters are all your regular monsters. Uh, and they come in different kinds of types. And those are important because of uh, different abilities throughout the game. Undead, forest creatures, fairies, people, etc. The next kind of card you get are the summon cards. And these are the cards that are used uh, to really determine the uh, hardness level of the game. So if you put one in there, it's easy, two, it's a normal, three, it's harder, etc. Each time you pull one of these out of the monster deck, this one gets replaced with an unhallowed, which makes the game harder because those are much harder monsters than the regular monsters. And then that's it for the monster cards. Then you have uh, the cards for your locations and these are the locations where you have to defeat the hordes of monsters in order to save the kingdom. And there are three types of these cards. They're the regular cards and then each one of these cards has what it happens to the fire. And the fire is important because that tells you how far ahead in the monster pile you can look. This is how many monsters go into 
the uh, line of monsters you have to face each turn. And then these are just effects from uh, uh, each place has. So in this case, place the lowest roll die on this card and it can't be used this round. So you lose one of your cards. Uh, the next type of cards are uh, respite cards. Uh, and these are little camp cards. They're not thrown in at the beginning. They come into play later. So they aren't in your uh, nine locations. And then you have a the ones with the castle are your final location. So that is location number nine for your uh, final battle. Uh, and those are your location cards. And then what I forgot to tell you about was on your creature cards, this is the amount of health, uh, so the number of points off of dice you have to use to kill this monster. Uh, so you have to manage your total dice numbers. And if you don't kill all the monsters before the round ends, if you're unable to do it, you run out of dice. Uh, this is how many ability cards your team loses uh, next round. Uh, and each, each creature is a little different, so uh, some of the cards, of course, don't have any of that. Um, next kind of card are your ability cards. So each character has five ability cards um, and that they can use for... Sometimes they're just passive and can be used. Sometimes they uh, cost a die to use. Uh, so each kind of character has a different one. So throw axe, you deal eight damage to a revealed creature in the second position. Uh, lower a revealed creature's health by half, rounding down. So each, each kind of character, each character has their own character-specific powers, basically. Uh, and then there's a side when it's active, and a side if you uh, uh, have to either you lose that power or you uh, uh, use it up. Um, and then, and that's described later, how that happens. The actual characters. Mine came with six characters. Um, these are where you can have three, you get three randomly generated powers or abilities each turn with one flipped upside down. I mean, at each game, to start the game. Uh, this is, tells you what kind of dice you have, and these are your three dice, so this Beastmaster uses eight-sided dice. This means that uh, they can attack creatures in the first or the second uh, space in line. And then this is your camp ability, so when you're the one character that's in camp, this is your special ability you can use there. Um, and so this character, for example, can only attack uh, creatures in the first row. Uh, and that is pretty much everything, except you have the last pieces are these wood pieces. Um, one's a fire marker. You start here. Uh, and what that means is you can see the first two in the line. If you build up your firewood, you can get to where you can see three. Or you drop down to where you can only see one. Uh, and then you have these camp markers. Each player, so four players, each one twice for eight turns, have to go to camp twice. So you can't put the same guy in camp every time. So you have to figure out when's the best time to put your guys in the camp based on what their abilities are, what your requirements are, etc. Uh, so that is really all of the parts of the game. Uh, and then if you just look at the game board itself, and I apologize that this is sideways, but the horde... These are the monsters that are going to come out in the last turn. So as you fail to defeat monsters during the game, they go into the horde. And at the end, so the more times you don't defeat them all, the worse it's going to be for you at the end. These are just your unused locations. These are your map locations, one to the other. These are different things you can do while in the camping phase. We've already talked about the firewood. But uh, you can check the map. You can uh, equip things. You can heal if you have dice with a six on it, exactly a six. Uh, and then you can chop firewood up to three times. You can use dice to scout ahead, etc. So those are all powers you could do, and it costs either dice or to fight you use the numbers on the dice. So which dice you choose 
uh, to do what becomes important. So anyway, that is all the components of the game. Uh, so next we'll go on to setup. All right, so setup of the game is pretty easy, and I apologize for I have this camera kind of sitting up on a chair, hanging, so if the uh, visual gets a little wonky, uh, that's just because of this is the only desk I have in this room. Easy to play on, not so easy to film on. But uh, the first step in setup is getting your characters together, and I just randomly drew the top four characters off the stack, so the Beastmaster, the Cleric, the Ranger, and the Warrior. Then I gave them their dice, so eight-sided dice, eight-sided six, and eight. Just got lucky that way. Now each of them, I pulled out the five uh, ability cards that go with each, uh, so I'm just going to randomly pick the top three. Uh, Put that one off to the side, do the same for all of these. And then, after you do that, you are supposed to randomly pick one to be deactivated. So I'm just going to randomly pick the first one of each one. You could roll a dice, that's what I normally do. Uh, but in this case, I'm just uh, throwing them down. Then you have your camp token, you just put that off to the side. The first time you go to the camp, you put it on the card with the one. The second time it's the two. They each have to go twice. Um, they each have to go exactly twice. So that is setting up the characters, and then these are just off to the side, and there are opportunities to change out your abilities. Next thing you do is you set up the map. So you take your map cards, uh, you pull out all of your respite cards, set them aside, shuffle these up, and I, I did shuffle already, and you just pull eight of them. And then you can choose whichever one of the final uh, cards you want. So we'll just pick this one. That one goes at the bottom. And just goes right there. Then you take, leave those two out, you mix up all the rest together, and again I'm working around the camera in the middle of the chair, uh, and they just go in the unused pile. Next thing you do is you set up your monsters. So first thing you do to set up your monster pile is you take out however many summon cards you want based on the difficulty. So we're going to do a normal game. So we'll pull out two, set the rest of the summons cards aside. And then you take randomly draw, uh, you know, from your regular monsters, enough cards to make a total of 30. So we would need 28 more cards. And they just go in your monster pile. And I've already shuffled these once, so I'm not going to... So we got our 28 cards, these just go off. Next thing you do, divide this into two stacks of, that are about the same height, and you randomly shuffle in a summons card into each stack. Um, and this way, the summons cards are mixed into the deck. So you don't know where they are, and then you put your taller one on top, and that becomes your creature deck. And then the last thing are the unhallowed. <clears throat> so you take, you shuffle up your unhallowed, you take one and place it face down in the horde. So that you know the last thing you're going to face is an unhallowed. And then you take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more, and you place them face up. And set the rest of them aside. And that is the completion of the setup. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Then you light the fire. The last thing you do is you put your uh, 
fire piece right there. Uh, and you can either just set it at 7, which is the standard difficulty, or you can roll a d8 and have 1 through 8 uh, if you want to make it a little bit harder. All right, so that is the entirety of the setup. Uh, next, we'll go on to how you actually play the game. So each turn consists of two phases, a camp phase and a watch phase. But before you do those, you roll the dice for the characters, which I did uh, already right before my camera died. Uh, so these were the actual numbers. Um, they're not great, so if I wanted to re-roll them, that would be a good thing to do, but I didn't. And you turn over the first location card. So in this case, the location would normally cause minus four to your firewood, uh, and you have a line of six monsters. But because it's the first turn, you don't execute this. Every other time you will execute it, uh, and that's what you do between rounds. Uh, and the effect of this one is uh, the adventurers can't combine their dice with each other to do direct attacks. Uh, so you can't, normally you could say, okay, a four from here and a six from here, that's a ten uh, to do a direct attack on a monster. You can't do that in this location, in the Grand Arena. So that's the setup, the in-between. Then you have to pick someone to go into the first phase, the watch phase. You take one of your characters, and I'm going to take the cleric. Take your token times one, so we know he's been there once. Each one has to go exactly two times each. Uh, and because he's going to the watch, you can recharge, I mean the camp phase, you can recharge one of your expired actions, expended actions, for free. And then you have four dice to do things with. Now there are lots of things you can do. You can do your camp specific action, which is in his case a heal. He can use a dice with a four to refresh one expended uh, action. Uh, exhausted action um, for one of the other guys or you can check the map which means you pull the top card here the top card here pick the one you want put it back here and then the other one slides to the bottom of that deck uh, you can equip which means you can change uh, stuff out um, you can heal but you have to have a six to do the heal so uh, that means uh, one exhausted ability card uh, for you or anyone else. Uh, then you can uh, uh, equip, like I said, equip is any dice, doesn't matter what number, and that's just you can change out one of your ability cards for one over there. Um, you can chop firewood, so every dice you expend over here gets you three additional uh, firewood. Uh, so in this case, I would take that number one, uh, and, or I'm sorry, you can do it up to three times. So one, and that will give you uh, fire, two firewood. So you could put all three there and get six, but so we'll just do one, two. Um, and then the other things that you can do is uh, scout ahead. Uh, you can do that up to three times. Uh, you draw and you can look at the top two creatures. Um, and each die has to be more than the other, so you could do the one first, then you'd have to do the four. You couldn't do it again because the four is not bigger than the four. Uh, and then the last thing you can do is, if you have doubles or triples, you can use these uh, spaces there. Uh, and those are the runes. Um, one of them is a seal, which means that you remove the top creature from the horde. Uh, one is a bolster, which means all the adventurers on the watch may re-roll any of their dice. And then the other one is vanquish, which I mean, uh, is seal, which remove an unhallowed from the graveyard and place it at the bottom of the unhallowed deck. So I, I misspoke the first time, but seal means you could pull an unhallowed and stick them at the bottom of the unhallowed deck. Uh, vanquish means that you can remove the top creature from the horde, uh, and uh, you just put it in the dead pile. Uh, and uh, the last one is bolster, which means they can rewatch. So what I would do is I would do bolster because some of these dice are really bad. So six is much better. I wouldn't reroll that, and I would reroll both of these, and a six and a seven. So much better off. Uh, and then I would use the other one. You have to do at least two. Uh, so I think I would do a vanquish because I happen to know that this is a a. Uh, it is an unhallowed, so I'll just stick it over there in the dead pile. Okay, before I go on to the second phase of the turn, the watch phase, I have to correct. Vanquish doesn't put the 
creature from the top of the horde pile into the dead pile, it just removes them from play. So that one is out of play. So now the first step in the watch phase is to set the line, which are all the creatures you have to fight in order. In this location, there are six of them, so you pull the first six um, and just set them up in a line. Hence the name. And then, because I have fire that's beyond two, it's bright enough that I can see two down the line. So I flip over the first one, and you do them one at a time because things happen, such as, in this case, you have the Ember Drake, which is, if it's here at the end of the turn, then you lose three ability cards. It takes 11 points to kill it. And when it gets to first position, you have to exhaust an ability card and lose three on your fire. Uh, so in this case, I'd lose three on my fire, and it would go below two, and I wouldn't even get to look at this one. However, I know that I have a set snare ability over here, which I'm going to use there, which says I can put a revealed creature back on top of the creature deck. And card priority, which is on the back here, summon cards always first, then ability cards can destroy creatures before their reveal ability activates. So he can just go back on the top here now. We'll have to deal with him next turn, but I know it's coming. So, and I've used up one dice. So these all move forward now. And then I'll reveal the next one, which is a forest giant. So his health is always added to the creature's base health behind it. Um, and then this is a tree ant. So his health is now going to be 16. Now, when, And when we defeat a tree ant, we get two extra fire. So that is, the line is set and the first round of direct combat is about to begin. Okay, so now that the line is set, the first two cards are shown, there are two ways to deal with the creatures. Now the goal is to get rid of all the creatures before you run out of action, so each of these dice. Uh, so I've already used one action. If the players run out of actions, then whatever is left in the line, they lose the total number of uh, ability cards that adds up all the creatures that are left, and these creatures then go into the horde to have to be faced in the last round. So you can use doing whatever order you want. You can add your dice together, except here in the Grand Arena where you cannot. Uh, so you can either use an action card to deal with them, or you can actually add up your actions. Um, so uh, what I think I'll do is to start off, because this adds together and I can't combine, uh, I don't want to do this and put it into the horde. Um, um, I think I'm just going to use two dice here um, and kill this. So that's 16. So now it goes into the graveyard. This one moves up. These move up because I still have enough. I can see what the next one is. Um, if the this one makes it to first position, you draw a creature and place it in front of the fell beast. Um, so I don't want to draw extra creatures in there. Uh, so what I really want is someone who can do damage to the second side, and I have to do 11 damage, um, which uh, I guess I'm going to hate to do this and burn so many dice, but I'm going to have to do that because it can go into second. I can get rid of that one. These move up. Oh no, a summon card. So you immediately replace this card with the top card from the Unhallowed deck. And you have to lose a uh, um, lose a uh, ability. So I'll just get rid of slumber here. Um, so that's not pleasant. I don't know that I've got enough dice to actually make this happen now. Um, so I think I'm already going to lose this round. Um, but I would want to get rid of that one beforehand. So uh, 
Um, yeah, I don't think that this is going to be possible, depending on what that other one is. So, um, so I think what I'll do is I'll put eight. Use this to give eight damage to this one, which leaves it with six. And then I'm going to burn. Uh, I guess I'll burn this six then to kill it. So it'll go over here into the graveyard. And this one gets revealed. It's a five. Uh, so I think what I will do. Um, I'm going to have to let it get to first position because it, when it gets first position I lose one of those so um, since I can't combine in direct attacks oh he's out oh actually I'm not going to be able to do it so I will kill the first one I'll kill the tree ant I get plus two to the firewood this one's gone it goes into the horde deck uh, I lose one firewood because it went into the horde deck. Right. I mean, because it came to first position. It goes in the horde deck, and I have to pick one more to actually burn. Uh, so I'll just do this one. All right, and that is the end of this turn. So then we recover all our dice. Uh, move on to the next turn, which was start with this haunted manor so this one actually you get two one two I can see three now it's gonna be six again uh, all the dice get refreshed you roll all the dice again and then you go back into the camp phase um, where you do this piece is probably is up to you it really doesn't matter as long as before you start your camp phase or before you start your watch phase um, and that's really the whole game in a nutshell. Now there's lots of nuances about how you do things, so which one would I pick this time based on based on the numbers? I'd probably send the Beastmaster in because I like having the doubles and getting to do gives me a lot more uh, choices, though a six would let me heal someone, so that might be a good choice. Um, but anyway, so they, that's there, and then I would just roll on through. That is the gameplay until you get to the very last round. So let me, uh, let me just reset and, and do a last round. All right, for the last round of the game is a little bit different. So you turn over your last location. In this case, it's the catacombs. So there are ten creatures, and four, you lose four firewood, so one two three four you gotta pull ten creatures out of the deck here so it's already hard so we're just gonna they go way off go off to the side there then you take the horde deck that goes and sits at the very end and as creatures roll off of here these will will come over in to refill the deck as necessary usually there's going to be a uh, un unhallowed at the end, uh, but in my case since I killed it, I haven't seen anything in the facts. It seems kind of wrong that you could do that. Maybe you can't do that. Um, but anyway, so then you play the same way except that everyone is on watch. No one goes into the camp uh, and you can still win the game. Either you kill all of these um, or even if you lose, as long as you have at least one ability card left, you can win the game. Uh, so this is one where you really have to manage your resources well uh, and try and get through a very large horde of creatures. Uh, so, you know, it's only two, so the first one is a fey. If they get to first position, you lose one. Now, if I lose one more firewood, I can only see one deep. Uh, but you can always exhaust one of these ability cards uh, to... Uh, increase your firewood uh, and then a wolf which is just a forest creature uh, so then you would just go through uh, the game as per normal and see how it ends up so that is how you play this game in a nutshell and now for discussion 
Uh, I'm only going to talk about this as a solo game, that's how I play it. Uh, one of the good things about it is it's small enough to throw in a backpack, throw in your suitcase. I wish that uh, I could make it a little bit smaller, but really that's a very minor quibble. Uh, it's a good size to take and travel and play solo. Uh, as far as the components themselves, they're all of pretty good quality. They're not super high-end quality, but it's a $30 game. Uh, they will last a while, and uh, I don't see them wearing out. And, uh, you know, I've got no complaints about the quality of the components, uh, the number of the components, uh, and uh, how it was all put together. And then the rule book is good. Uh, it's concise, it's quick, it's clear, it's got good artwork, it's got descriptions, shows you everything it needs to show you. Couple of editorial mistakes, but not very many. Uh, you know, just a couple, so nothing to really worry about. And uh, overall, the rule book is pretty darn good. Okay, as for theme, you know, I think overall it hits the fantasy world, D&D, uh, Lord of the Rings kind of theme pretty well. I don't get the feeling that I am saving the world from these guys coming back uh, and I'm going to these locations to defeat them. What I really do get is the theme of I am, you know, at my campground and the monsters are coming and I'm fighting to save myself and my friends uh, from the onslaught of nighttime enemies. Really the Lord of the Rings camping with the Nazgul coming over the hill kind of thing. So I think it hits that pretty well. I don't really get the story, but you know there is no characters being developed throughout the course of the game or anything like that. So really I get the I am traveling through the wilderness for whatever reason I want to make up and uh, I'm just fighting off the monsters that are attacking me at night. Uh, I think a lot of what makes the theme is the artwork. Uh, the artwork is very good. Uh, it's not scary but it, it is enough to really get the monster theme uh, through uh, and just scary enough where it wouldn't bother younger audiences but uh, we keep uh, keep them scared a little bit. Uh, don't know how else to say it. Uh, I think the way they did the campground and the playing board as part of the box is really nice. It works real well. The art on it is, is good. Uh, it does, you know, make the board work. Um, but as I think I've said before, uh, kind of wish that I could break it all down uh, and that they were separate. On the other hand, you don't really have to have it uh, other than for the campground and, you know, some way to keep track of the fire. Uh, so, overall, I think a nice job on the theme, I think a nice job on the artwork, I think it really plays to the fantasy genre and to uh, the feeling of being attacked overnight. As for the gameplay and mechanics, um, it's very quick to learn, it's pretty easy in the basic concepts, uh, and it's very fast to set up, it doesn't take a lot of space. Um, but it does have a lot of tactical depth that has a little bit of strategic, operational kind of level of uh, detail uh, and forward planning, but most of it is all revolved around puzzle solving with the level that you're on right now. So uh, you do have to think about how your actions are going to affect the future, especially when it comes to the horde deck or when it comes to your abilities and what you're going to have and not have. Um, and if you burn out someone's abilities, then they can't actually set the watch next round. You're going to have to put them in the camp, but if you're out of, they've already been twice, they can't get to the camp again, so you have to be careful. And the tactical decisions uh, really revolve around a lot of uh, things. So you have your dice. There's randomness of the dice, but that's really offset by the fact that low dice rolls can be used to trigger abilities, it can be used to chop wood. Um, Doubles are helpful, triples are helpful because you can do certain things. High numbers are better for direct attacks, uh, but you're not going to be totally destroyed because of some low uh, dice rolls. Uh, and there are some abilities or ways to re-roll dice. Uh, so there is a randomness to the dice. It will change the kinds of decision you make, uh, but everything is not completely driven by you have to have a high dice roll. You really have to manage the line of monsters, uh, and to do that, not only do you have to, you know, use your abilities judiciously, you have to really manage the firewood. Um, because if you don't have enough firewood, you can't see far enough down the line to protect yourself when things get triggered. Uh, it's really nice to know that, uh, you know, something with a really bad thing that's going to happen to you if it gets to first position, which seems to happen a lot, 
uh, I can take that out now when it's in second position and save myself a lot of pain later. Um, then there's the management of your abilities and the management of your characters and which characters go into watch, which characters go into camp, uh, how you're going to manage their abilities, which abilities you're going to switch out. Um, I do wish maybe there were six or seven abilities instead of five, but five is adequate. Um, and when you're playing four characters yourself, five for each one is a good bit to manage, so uh, not a big deal, just a little quibble. It would be nice to have one or two more abilities. Um, and then how you're going to manage that horde. So uh, do you save an ability knowing that you're going to lose, uh, which means you're going to lose some more abilities and something's going to go in the horde. Uh, so it does uh, how you manage all that uh, and then how the, uh, the towns play in uh, the different locations uh, and you know which locations uh, you do what at uh, does keep a lot of tactical uh, decision making. So like I said, it's really sitting and thinking about the puzzle of how you're going to manage this horde. As for replayability, I think there's a lot more here than you would initially think. Um, first off, you have the variability of the locations. Uh, each game is going to have different locations which have different effects on the game. Uh, you can vary the difficulty by how many summons you put in. Uh, there are, in my box, there are eight heroes. Um, so the eight heroes uh, can change things up. Uh, the unhallowed uh, are very variable. Each game will be different. You don't see that many each game, so there's a lot of uh, new stuff each time, and you never know quite what's going to happen. I am sure that there could be additional monsters in an expansion, unhallowed locations, um, but it's going to take me a long time between the difficulty levels and getting through uh, all of the different unhallowed uh, I think there's a lot of playability here. Now, unlike Unbroken, uh, which felt like even though things changed, it always played exactly the same, uh, all the variability and the differences between the characters and the differences between the places and the summons levels and everything, how I play each game, the tactics I use are different for each character, each location, each game, so it does make it feel a whole lot more variable as opposed to, yeah, it's a different character, but I'm going to do the exact same thing with them. Uh, so I think there is a lot of replayability. For a $29 game, I think it has a good bit of uh, time that I'll be able to play it. All right, so my overall impression. First off, it is hard. Um, it's actually really hard. I lose a lot more than I win. But it's hard in a good way, not a frustrating way. Uh, so it does make me want to keep coming back. Um, you know, it's not immersive from a standpoint of I feel like I'm part of the story and I'm going to defeat the unhallowed to save the world, but it really hits that, like I said, Lord of the Rings, protecting from the Nazgul, you know, I'm around a fire with a camp vibe pretty darn well. Um, it's tactically deep enough to keep me interested with lots of decision making. Um, but I'm not immersed in a world. What I'm really immersed in is the puzzle solving and the management of the dice and the way the dice interplay with the characters, with the abilities, with the camp, and who I'm going to put. So it's all a puzzle that's different every time. Uh, so uh, I really enjoyed that piece of it. Um, it is a tad long. Nine rounds is a long time to be doing this and it's part of what makes it really hard. Um, but I don't know how you make it shorter. Uh, with the way that it's set up with having to do it twice, uh, each person going into the camp twice. Uh, but it, it is a little bit long. Uh, I wish it was a little shorter, um, but I can't knock them too much because I can't figure out how you would make it shorter. Um, overall, if I had to put this on my scale of on the table, which means I'm playing it all the time, you know, on the shelf, which means I'm pulling it down for those binges, in the closet, you know, pull it out every few months, uh, you know, trade it. I don't really like it, but it's a good game. I'll give it to somebody else or trash it. I would definitely put this on the shelf. Uh, I tend to play it several times, uh, then I'll put it away. Um, if you noticed earlier on, I had my rule book out because it's been, you know, a month or so since I played it. Uh, so I was making sure I knew uh, all the different rules. Um, so this is one that you pull out, especially taking it on a trip or if you go camping or, you know, have an RV or any of that kind of stuff. This is a good one to, to put in there. Uh, 
I'll play five or six games and then I'll put it away for a while. So I think overall it's a pretty good game. I enjoyed it. Not that expensive. Um, if you happen to come across it, might as well give it a try. Uh, so like I said, this is a binge playing game every every so often, uh, but I really did enjoy it. It hits the theme. It's a great puzzle solving adventure with some resource management thrown in, uh, and it has that vibe of fantasy world protecting the fire. So overall, good job. Uh, until next time, happy gaming.